Well, can you believe it? Series 4 is actually 15 years old this year? God, it only feels like yesterday the Doctor had to leave Donna because of the Time Lord Matter Crisis. And of course, we await a return of David Tennant and Catherine Tate to Doctor Who again. However, 2022 wasn't the first time we actually got this announcement about these two people returning to be the Doctor and Donna. Oh no, this is actually the second. Perhaps people don't remember the first. I mean, it was years ago. So, let me take you on a trip back to the world of Series 4. But not for the TV series, tying novels, comics, or storybooks. Oh no, it's time to talk about the Doctor and Donna's adventures on Big Finish. So in 2015, Big Finish, the creative mind behind the Doctor Who audios, finally got the green light to start including characters from the revival. First, there was recurring characters like Kate Stewart, Jenny, and Lady Christina de Souza. <sighs> yes, I bought both box sets at the time. But with the success of these audios came bigger opportunities in store for Big Finish. These bigger opportunities turned out to be the chance to use revival doctors, such as the War Doctor, played by the late great John Hurt, and recently the Ninth Doctor, played again by Christopher Eccleston. But the first proper revival doctor to come back for new adventures was David Tennant, the Tenth Doctor, in a little box set called The Tenth Doctor Adventures. Doctor and Donna arrive back on Earth for a glimpse of future technology, but it seems that even the technology of the future won't update properly. My thoughts in this episode is that it was a really great first story to introduce the people to this box set. It had a great idea of setting itself on modern day to get us familiar with the story and the characters, and not on the future planet where you'd have to introduce a lot more to help out the listeners. The story itself may be one that the revivals picked apart many times with its commentary on people technology, something that stories like the sound of drums, the bells of St. John and Spyfall have all done. But unlike those where a villain is using the technology and apps to drag the humans into their plans, this story decides that just being around technology is dangerous into itself, and I think that's what makes it still inventive. Now, along with my thoughts, I want to ask this question about the story and if it would fit into series 4 and its series of stories. And my answer would be yes, I think this story would be best to be put in between the Doctor's daughter and the alien called the Wasp. The Doctor and Donna arrive on Calibris, a spaceport planet where anything goes, but if anything going, there seems to be an illegal weapon loose on the streets, a one named the Time Reaver. My thoughts on this episode was that it was probably the weakest episode in the box set. It does have that wild alien planet story that the RTD era didn't end up doing much, which means anyone who wasn't really a fan of the modern day or celebrity historicals of that era would probably get behind this one. However, I think the episode got more bogged down in the ideas of the story, like the idea of the Time Reaver weapon and the spaceport planet than the story itself. If anything, the story could have done with a couple of extra little things to spice it up. But it's time to answer that big question again. Would this story fit into the adventures of Series 4? And I'd probably have to say no, as it doesn't have that feel of something important which the other episodes had. Even if you were say to put it after the library two part, it would just seem a bit out of place, especially with the repercussions of the story. On the trip to Earth's past, Donna's found love again and decides to propose. However, her went doesn't go far when Death decides to come knocking. Honestly, this episode was my favourite of the first three adventures, and maybe out of the whole six for this video. It's another when episode, however, the thing about this one is it's not trying to be wholly comedic or wholly serious. It's more of a comedy horror with a lot of character into it. Honestly, from beginning to end, I had such a fun time with this one. It came from wholly its quality and premise, which originally got me sucked into this box set when it first came out. And I can say it still does, even to this day. Now, to answer the question, would this episode fit the fills and the spills of Series 4? Yes, however you'd have to keep it after the library two part due to Donna getting married in those episodes, so I'd probably say it'd be best place after midnight as Donna seems more prepared to when it comes to the wind business, possibly due to her own personal experiences. Extra spooky TV show Haunted Makeup has taken over Haunted Manor with special history for their show. And luckily, the guests this evening are the Doctor, Donna, Sylvia, and Wilf. What could possibly go wrong? Undisputedly, I was always going to like this story which had all the noble gang. And to be honest, everyone really puts it to their all in this story, which in many ways is a patch teacher for those old two version shows where they had to find ghosts or other spectres in houses. But even then, the fact that once this one gets going, it pulls out the whole pastiche scenario for something rather brilliant but creepy. But anyways, will this fit with the creepy goings on the series 4? 
Well, I feel like this episode was actually perhaps based on a story that nearly made it into series 4. This is a story known as Century House, written by Rise of the Simon writer Tom McRae. In that story, the Doctor was supposed to be on the show Most Haunted itself. And yes, it was a comedic tale that turned into a horror one by the end, just like this one. However, in series 4 itself, Century House was replaced by Midnight, which I much prefer. But what if I wanted to keep this one? I put in place the Unicorn and the Wasp, but it would be a much better comedic tale than that one. The Doctor and Donna decide to take a holiday in the beautiful underwater city of Balarasi. However, trouble occurs when something starts leaking into the dome, and if the Doctor and Donna don't hurry, the waters may continue to rise. My thoughts on the story is that it was probably one of my least favourite of the six that I had to listen for this video. This is perhaps due to the story be not very interesting, apart from the fact that it was another disaster episode and that there's do not involved. Now, does this episode reach the lengths of other series 4 stories? No, although it does have the aspect of the holiday movie that the Doctor and Donna are trying out in Midnight and Turn Left, especially this one starting out with them picking a holiday destination from random. However, with it being a major disaster episode, I'd probably not choose it due to Voyager Dam being the disaster special that counts as series 4, so to not be repetitive, it'd probably be best if we just left this one out. The Doctor and Donna accidentally arrive in London 1952. It's around one of the times where the deadliest smog attacks in London, but it seems that something's hidden in the mist and wants to kill everyone. This episode was actually a really entertaining episode. It felt like a horror film at times, maybe unintentionally trying to emulate the fog. That said, I really wish this episode was a bit longer, as I feel like the resolution and the ending was a little bit rushed despite this episode being 10 minutes longer than the usual RTD one. And finally, does this episode blow its way into the roster of series 4 stories? Yes, I think this would have been for a great historical story to put after the Library 2 part. So, after all that, I decided that all but two of them would fit into Series 4. But I mean, doesn't that say something about the quality of Series 4, that I would not replace any of the episodes? But I mean, truly, it was some of the best work that the original RTD era conjured up for us all, and I'm glad that these expanded stories could live up to the same quality of that era and not feel like the odd one's out. And before I go, no, I haven't listened to the Tev Doctor Adventures Volume 2, as those are 10 and Rose stories. I mean, I'd like to, because I'm very interested to see if those stories would fit into Series 2's quality, so perhaps maybe in my own time, I may come back to this question later into this video and see if those stories would fit into Series 2 or not. And as always, I'll be seeing you, my friends.